Welcome to Divine Feminine Rising with Mezdaline. I'm Mezdaline, and my intention with this podcast is to entertain, educate, and illuminate as I share the power and magic of the Divine Feminine. Thank you so much for being here. I'm grateful for your time and attention. So I've traveled to Arizona to help my dear sister friend leave her husband and reach for freedom. It's been a joy to watch her journey from being a well-tamed victim to an empowered woman. This is my inspiration for this podcast. I want to celebrate the hard work that she and other women have done to make this type of move and hopefully inspire even more women to also step into their own unique power. I don't have my podcasting equipment with me, so please forgive any background noise. So while I'm here helping my friend, I helped her pack and unpack all those things that go along with moving. Uh, It was a lot of work, but it was worth it. And one of the things I packed and then unpacked and reshelved in their new home are her many books. One of those books is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And as I picked up the book, I remembered hearing about her story that she told about the cheetah that she and her children saw at a zoo. So most of us know that cheetahs are wild animals, and they're also the fastest land mammal mammal in the world. And they're used to running through the savanna plains of Africa and hunting their prey when they're hungry. In the wild, they're free to be who they are born to be. Well, the cheetah that Glennon and her children saw was trained to chase a stuffed animal tied to the back of a truck and then is rewarded with a stake. This is her life. She's been tamed and trained to obey the zookeeper. Every day, she chases a stuffed animal that she never catches. Watching my friend reclaim herself has given me so much food for thought. The story that Glennon tells about the cheetah reminds me of how, as women, we've been conditioned to obey, to be subservient. And in my own life as a child, I was my father's property. I remember as a little kid him referring to my mother as the wife or the little woman when he talked to other people. And even as a child, I knew he considered her property like the chair or the television. And it, and it just freaked me out. I, rem- I, knew, I knew this was wrong, even though I was a small child. And I was also definitely his property. Um, So in this lifetime, I started as a man's piece of property, and it took a lot of work to become the empowered woman that I am today. And in this episode, I wanted to share some of the things I've learned along the way. So as women, we've been conditioned to be the little woman, the weaker sex, less than, and we've been shut down and trained to be smaller than we are. We've taught to be nice. We've been conditioned to be the homemakers. How many women do you know work full-time jobs just like their husbands and are usually, most of the time, at least in my experience of what I've seen, they are also expected to come home after working their eight-hour shift and do the cooking, the housework, and the child care. I've been in their shoes. I have worked full time and come home and done all the things after work while my husband relaxed and watched TV or pursued his hobbies. This is wrong. The worst part of our conditioning, in my opinion, is being taught to be dependent on men. After all, the weaker sex certainly can't make major life decisions. So many women 
I know who work full time are in a relationship where the man does the finances. I know one woman whose husband died after 40 years of marriage and she'd never written a check. Now, the truth is, he died of cancer. It wasn't a sudden like heart attack or stroke. He died slowly. It never occurred to either one of them that maybe she should have this information. She had no idea what bills they had or how to pay them. She didn't have access to any accounts because she didn't know the passwords. So after my second marriage ended, I felt cut loose and lost. I had been a daughter, a wife, and a mother, but now I didn't know who I was. I decided to stay single for a few years and figured out what was my role. What is this new role? So during that time, I worked on what I call reconditioning my brain. I'd been conditioned by my family and society to be less than, to be dependent on men, to be subservient, and I was done with that. So you might wonder, what does that mean, reconditioning your brain? Well, it means just like reconditioning a used computer or other item to bring it back into good condition, we can recondition our brains. It's taking our used and conditioned brain and reconditioning it to make it in better condition. So women who've been conditioned, like myself, to be subservient can be reconditioned to be empowered. Women who have been conditioned to be less than can be reconditioned to know that they are more than. And best of all, women who've been conditioned to be dependent on others can recondition themselves to be independent and free. As women, we've been quieted. Our voices have been dimmed and often unheard. We get the message everywhere from family, society, and even religion telling women they have no valuable voice. It's time for reconditioning and becoming who we are truly meant to be. So you might wonder, how do you recondition your brain? And I can only tell you what worked for me and that this is something that takes work and time. But I'm telling you, I promise you, the rewards are great. So first of all, eliminate the word can't. I used to have a sign in my studio, and I want to make another one for my new studio, my belly dance studio. And it says, can't is a four-letter word, and it's not allowed in my studio. So my belief is that I'm just a normal woman, and if I can do something, any woman can. I tell my belly dance students, instead of saying, I can't do that, say, I don't know how to do that yet. You can apply this to anything in your life. Instead of saying, I can't stand up to my husband, say, I'm not ready to stand up to my husband. I know people who say, I want to leave my husband, but I can't because of this or that, right? Instead of that, say, I want to leave my husband, but I don't know how yet. And speaking of husbands or other significant others, if they are in charge of your finances, Tell them you want to know how to take care of business in case anything happens to them. While it's true that some see being in charge of finances as being in control, many have been conditioned that this is their role. So I have uh, two friends who have been married for 50 years, over 50 years now, and the husband has always taken care of the finances. It's not a thing of control for him. It's a thing of being conditioned that the man took care of these things, right? So one day, he ends up in the hospital. And he's in the hospital for a week. And they don't know if he's going to make it. They don't know if he's going to live. And so his wife is distraught. She doesn't know how to do She's never written a check. And he did get well, and he did come to the awareness on his own, this, this is a cool guy, let me tell you, that, oh my goodness, I need to teach my wife 
how to do the finances. She doesn't even know how to write a check. I need to teach her this in case something happens again and I don't make it. So if your partner refuses to share financial information with you, you know, if they think that that's their way of controlling and they're not going to give that up, that control, if the, your accounts are in both of your names, you can go to the bank, and I'm just saying, I'm advising you, go to the bank and ask for three to six months of statements. You can look on those statements and see where the money is going, how much the bills are, when they're due, and all those things. If your name isn't on the account, then you might want to think about starting your own bank account. Remember, don't say can't, just do it or say you're not ready to do it. If there's something that keeps you dependent on anyone or anything, learn how to do it or find a friend that can help you. For instance, I don't work on cars. That is not something I have the slightest interest in doing. And years ago, I had a feminist friend, and she said, you need to learn how to work on your own car so you're not dependent on men. What would you do if there were no men in the world to work on your car? I said, I'd find a woman to do it. And by the way, my mechanic's name is Julie. I really just have no desire to learn how to work on my car. I can do so many things, including carpentry. But I don't feel the need to do all the things. I've called my son a couple of times in the last few years and asked him for advice on how to do something that I don't know how to do. <laughs> and the reality is he usually doesn't know how to do it either because our brains are really similar. And so his answer is always, if he doesn't know how to do the thing right, Google it, Mom. He says, that's what I do. If I don't know how to do something, I Google it. And guess what, people? Google is a wonder. I have Googled everything from how to fold the seats into the floor of my van to how to start this podcast. I love Google. If I have a question I don't know the answer to, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, you had to go to the encyclopedia, which there was like 20-something of them, and they were two inches thick, and oh my goodness, now I have my phone and I just ask Google. So another way I reconditioned my brain was to focus on what I can do and not on what I can't do. When I was young, I was a devout pessimist due to all the abuse I'd endured as a child. I believe that expecting the worst was the least painful thing to do because then there were no surprises. People who know me now would never have recognized this version of me. I have retrained my brain to look for the good in the world, to see everything from the beauty of a leaf in the fall to the kindness of strangers. I found a counselor who helped me with this concept. And he also turned me on to a book called Love is Letting Go of Fear, written by Jerry Jampolsky. It was life-changing. I learned how to retrain my brain, how to let go of judgment, the power of forgiveness, and so much more. It's important to understand that knowing these things isn't enough. It takes applying this knowledge every day until your attitude shifts. And with the help of counseling back decades ago and applying the tools that I learned, I went from being a dependent victim to an empowered goddess. And this wasn't like an instant thing. I want you to know it does take practice. It does take daily diligence. And you can... Do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Do you have a voice? And I'm saying it's time to use it. If it's not safe to speak up in your home, I've been there. I understand. Find a counselor. 
or a group of women where you can speak your truth safely. Take a class. Join a book club. There's so many things that you can do where you can begin to speak your truth and feel the support of others. You will begin to see your own power. You will begin to understand the value of you and how important you are. The other way I retrain my brain is something I've spoken about before on my podcast, and it's the most important way, and that is to love yourself. Look at yourself through the eyes of a loved one. I know that when I had my daughter, I felt loved for the first time in my life. That tiny being adored me. She loved me unconditionally. Her eyes would light up when I came into the room, and she helped me to see that I was important after all. Look in the mirror every day and smile at yourself. Look into your own eyes and say, I love you and mean it. For some, it's the unconditional love of a child. For some, the unconditional love of a parent or even a dog that can help them see their own worthiness. I want you to know that you are worthy. We are all worthy of loving and being loved. We are all unique and we all matter. Our voices matter. We are important and the world is a better place because we are in it. Hear me when I say this. The world is a better place because you are in it. You are loved. You have value. You matter. The divine feminine is rising and she's calling us into our power. Instead of being chained by societal conditioning, we're going to break free of our chains and do whatever we want to do and be whoever we want to be. I am so happy and gratified to see that some of the younger generation are already reaching this point where they're not seeing the limitations that those of us from previous generations have been put on us, and they're finding their power and wisdom earlier than those of us who have gone before them. I celebrate that. I get excited every time I talk to a young person who has wisdom that I didn't gain until I was in my 40s or 50s. One thing I want you to know is that I'm here for you whoever you are. I am here to serve. And if you need me, please, please reach out. I will see you. I will hear you. And I will love you. So I want to end this episode with an amazing and empowering poem by Arlene Bailey. You can find her on Facebook. I follow her and she is incredibly inspiring. Her page is called Her Sacred Wild, and she posts the most inspiring poetry and beautiful artwork, all focused on the divine feminine. I want to thank Arlene so much for being such a beautiful beacon of light in the world. The poem is called I Bow to Me. I have stopped apologizing for myself, stopped wiping the dripping blood just to make myself socially acceptable to the masses. I am a wild woman, and I own every single cell in this aging, morphing into Willendorf, called by the Morrigan and Arishkigal body. I am the wolf prowling under the full moon sky, both loner and tribal. Tiger stalking her prey, knowing she is the key to removing her own bindings. The panther lying seductively in wait, for just the right moment to pounce. I am the owl in flight under the dark moon, diving towards the deepest depths of the dark underworld with eyes to see in the dark and wings to soar to the highest light. The grandmother turtle moving at her own pace, knowing she has existed lifetimes upon lifetimes and will exist for that many more for the codes of the universe are written upon her very skin. I am the old antlered one who has walked the ley lines, the dragon lines, since before time was time. I am crone and virgin, 
seductress and mother, Amazon and warrioress, sorceress, witch and conjure woman, medial woman and keeper of realms, modern woman and ancient one, all connected by the blood of ancestors and woman's shared experience through millennia. I am all these things and more, and I will not apologize for the scars and wounds that brought me to this place, this now of owning it all, regardless of the opinions of others, or the stakes of a society that would see me in chains or even dead. I will not apologize for the strength found and the wisdom honed through rituals, studies, teachings, and inner world knowings. I will not apologize for standing strong in the face of untenable atrocities, for I have learned to love myself. I have learned to love me, and I adore the woman I am becoming. I am a sovereign being walking this earth as woman again and again and again through all the timelines and lifetimes after lifetimes, feral, wild, and free. I bow to me. Thank you for joining me today. My mission is to help bring back the balance of the divine feminine to spirituality. Please share my podcast with anyone who might be interested in the divine feminine and personal empowerment. And if you'd like to connect with me further, feel free to reach out. You can find me at mesdaline.com, Divine Feminine Rising with Mesdaline.com, Mesdaline Bliss, or Mesdaline on Facebook. TikTok, and Instagram. And also, please join my mailing list if you'd like to receive my newsletter. Allow the love of your light to shine. Be the change. Lead the way. And always remember your light of love is a needed gift to the world that only you can give.